Hello, and welcome to Leadership Table Talk, a show designed to help you develop and improve your leadership skills and talents. I'm your host, Dr. Mary Gellum. Let me ask you a question. What does it take to be successful? Some writers would argue that success is a derivative of monetary accomplishments, power, influence, or even fame. Yet I believe that there is much more to success, which is why I invited my dear friend and fellow author to come and discuss her perspective on success, which is chronicled in her new book, From the Front Desk to the Corner Office. Please help me to welcome Ms. Maria Stanfield. Maria, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mary. It's a pleasure to be here. You're welcome. Maria, you have such an amazing portfolio. So let's just begin by just telling the audience a little about your background. Well, uh, I have an interesting story, not the standard. Um, I, I'm going to tell you a little story about how I got into what I'm doing today, and we'll go uh, deeper. But essentially, uh, as a young girl, uh, my parents broke up. And my, I remember walking into my home, and my father left for the for the last time, and we didn't. He didn't live in the home with us again. And so us girls, I have four, uh, three sisters. So the four of us had to go to work. And so I didn't have the traditional trek to go to college. Uh -huh. So I entered the workforce with a high school education, and from there. Um, I've just had an amazing opportunities, mm -hmm. mentors, coaches to bring me through from the front desk to the corner office of a major law firm. Mm -hmm. So I'm married with uh, three beautiful daughters <laughs> and one amazing granddaughter. Wonderful, Maria. Well, uh, this next question here has to do with one of our favorite people, Steve Harvey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you were selected as the career coach for the Steve Harvey Act Like a Success Conference. Uh, can you describe what it was like to be uh, selected for such an honor and uh, share some specifics of what you did during that event? Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, I had attended the event before uh -huh. and there was a commercial on, Mary, that I heard and the the commercial said, we'll talk about business and entrepreneurship, and it went on and on, and bing, they said, they said career. And I said, career? That, that's right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> so I contacted the vice president mm -hmm. of the Steve Harvey Alex Success Conference and said, hey, this is what I do. Would you, uh, if you need someone to speak on that, I'd be happy to. I didn't hear anything for a long time. And then one day, I got the phone call that they, they had reviewed, I guess, my background and invited me to join as wow. a, not only as a breakout speaker, but a coach within the group. And so it's just been a, a blessing and an honor to be part of that uh, amazing, amazing team. Wow, that is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I know when you shared that the first time and I read it in the book, I was like, oh my God, this is so awesome. Yeah, he's an amazing man, too. <laughs> so let me ask, um, as the director of administration at a very prestigious law firm yes. here in the area, you wrote this article entitled, Changing Dress Codes for Law Firms. That article not only appeared in the uh, Washington Lawyer DC Magazine, but also the Washington Business Journal. Uh, can you elaborate on specifics from that particular article? Absolutely. It was at a time where we were really shifting. You know, there's been casual days for a long time. Yes. But it was really shifting to a lot of companies moving to all casual every day. And so uh, they asked me about that. And for me, my business suit is a dress. I am mm -hmm. uh, in uh, many of the circles, uh, boardrooms and things of that nature. I'm the only woman and I am the only minority in the room quite often. Mm -hmm. And so my signature attire is a dress. Yes. I bring all of my femininity and jewelry and everything with me. And so they asked me to, to speak on that and about the corporate attire mm -hmm. uh, because it does, it really does, it's your brand. Yes, absolutely. It's your brand. And so yes. I talked about you know your, the branding of yourself through your attire because people, frankly, they see you first. Uh -huh. They don't hear you, they, uh -huh. may, they may look at your resume, but they see you first. Absolutely. What kind of attire or presence are you bringing with your brand? Absolutely, you, oh, you said a mouthful <laughs> there. <laughs> so Maria, uh, you're such a busy lady here. <laughs> Uh, in 2014, you started My Sister's Closet, and you followed that up in 2016 with uh, My Sister's uh, CEO. Yes. Uh, those ventures, uh, what inspired you to do that? 
both of them? Well, the nonprofit, you know, I, I saw I saw that I had been doing that in my mm -hmm. background for a long time. Yes. My Sister's Closet is an organization that supports women uh, in transition from sh uh, homeless shelters and halfway houses, prison, frankly, and and and, and systems like that mm -hmm. to pull them out. You know, there's they are. Um, they're stuck yes, uh -huh. and they need help. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to be there for them to help those women transition, particularly my heart you know, was with those women who were in domestic violence situations and they were in those safe houses. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the signature areas. And so my heart was for them, I was helping. And then I just formed the organization and, and it came to me, my sister's closet, because the clothing piece, yes. again, back to your brand, <laughs> uh, is one of the initial segments and then that people as assess, but also your resume, mm -hmm. your interview skills, your presence. Right. And so teaching those women, not only the job skills, but helping them in that format as well. And then I noticed, Mary, that there were women reaching out to me, women like you and I, mm -hmm. who were saying, well, could you help me with my resume? Uh -huh. Can you help me with career coaching? Can you support me in this? And that's how I launched my sister CEO. It was for to help those women because clearly it's a nonprofit on one end. But mm -hmm. I really wanted to to reach this entire sisterhood that was that had this void. Oh, that is uh, such an amazing uh, story there, Maria, because you're such a giver. And to be able to Thank do you. those kind of things and make such an impact on women, uh, it's just remarkable. And uh, again, you know, being such a busy lady, how do you uh, do what I know you coach a lot of your clients to do, and that is to uh, really take advantage of the work-life balance? How do you achieve that in your life? Thank you for asking me that question. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a constant reassessment on a regular basis just as I do my goals for my business mm -hmm. for my my organization for my employer for um, for my personal life my family my husband in particular of <laughs> almost 35 years has congratulations you know, thank you uh, he has to be part of that and yes. in fact he's at the center of that yes. so with that I just make sure that I calendar time we take every quarter we take at least one or two getaways. We have date night every Friday night. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> every and so that's that's his time unless I'm traveling uh -huh. and or and he's traveling with me. Mm -hmm. uh, it it is we do what we want. Uh -huh, right. Right? So mm -hmm. if your if your family is important to you, if your husband, if your work, whatever those things are, you prioritize them. That's part of my one of my signature talks that it is it's push. It's prioritize what's important to you understand what your challenges are. S is, is for surround yourself with accountability and sisterhood and H is for hold on to your faith. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> and, and such a good transition because my next question was to actually talk about the PUSH conference that you did uh, last year and it was so successful. And I know you've got it scheduled again uh, in August of this mm -hmm. year. I do. And so I just want you to uh, talk about that event and what it was like to birth that kind of conference. Many people ask me about the book, right? <laughs> um, and so it, it started from that. And they was like, how did you push that book out? How did you make that happen? And after, after completing the book and getting those kind of questions, I knew there was more for me to do. And I really just pushed forward. And I knew it was an action word. And so I say, I'm saying the word push, but that I knew that the conference was an action word. Mm -hmm. Was it pull? Was it, you know, what, what was it? Was it sore? It was push. We had to birth some things out. And so, but I will tell you, you say it was extremely successful. I will tell you this though, Mary, a month before the conference, and I'm advertising on social media and all, and that I had sold maybe, two, maybe five tickets. And I'm thinking, am I hearing this right? Am I supposed to really be doing this? But I will tell you, uh, we sold out. Uh -huh. We sold out two weeks before, had over 100 women in the room, oh, and, and this is our, our annual event every mm -hmm. August. And so this year we're expecting to double or triple those numbers, but I'm super excited to help women on their journey to success, and whether that's business, career, whatever that area is. We have multiple clients who have launched their books <laughs> and who have launched their businesses and the like. So it's been an exciting time. 
That is awesome. So if I've got it correct, the next one is in August. Yes, it's every August. Exactly. Yes, every and if people want to find out more information about that particular conference, is it on Eventbrite or? It's on our website, oh, actually. Okay. It's mysisterceo.com. Oh, okay. Mysisterceo.com. Okay. And you can have all our information there about the book, about the conferences, about you name it, about me and my availability <laughs> as well and uh, the entire sisterhood of my sister C. Oh, that's awesome, Maria. So now we're going to actually transition and talk about this fabulous book of yours that okay. you've just written. Here. Thank you. <laughs> and so, what I liked about the book was th the title was so intriguing. So, can you just tell us where you got that title from and just talk about that? Uh, the title, uh, I, I'm a God, I'm a God girl. I, yes. I call myself a God girl, okay? Yes. I'm just going to keep it real and no shame to uh -huh. that. that and, and it just dropped in me uh, several years ago. I've been thinking about the book for a long time, but that's my story. I started yes. as a front desk receptionist, and today I am sitting in the largest corner office of a major law firm. Mm -hmm. So I'm super, super excited about uh, telling you know, it's one thing to say, okay, these are the seven steps to how to be successful, <laughs> but what about telling the story yes. and the things that happened, yes. the things, the personal things that were going on? Because people think you just, you know, you rise to the top, you take the ladder, you rise to the top, but really, it's a journey, and there, there are some highs and lows, there are some failures, and a lot, a lot of learning. How do you get that in spite of the things that happen in life? How do you get there in spite of the challenges that you're faced on the job as, as a minority, as a woman? I'm sure that you can relate to that yes, as well. Yes. As someone who was not as educated <laughs> as the people in that circle, mm -hmm. it's all in the book of how to do that and overcome those things. And frankly, the fears that we have, mm -hmm. all of us, whether we want to admit it or not, <laughs> have those. And uh -huh. as you move to the next level and move to the next level, what do you do at that next level to stay successful, right? Yes, because once you get yes. on that step, that ladder to the next level, more is expected of you. Right, right. Yeah, uh -huh. so you move from a staff member to a manager, to mm -hmm. leadership, to executive. Each of those paths, each of those levels are critical, right, to how we show up. And we don't show up as we did as a front desk receptionist That's the same way we do as a ex senior executive of a major law firm. Exactly. So I, I recall in the book you talked about dressing for that next level, not just dressing for where you currently are, but dressing for that next level. Can you talk about that? <laughs> There's a funny story in the book. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember this. I do. <laughs> <laughs> where I came from a, 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 a not so lucrative modeling career. Uh, and I can't, that was a long time ago. But essentially, um, so I come in my first day on the, I'm about to start my new job in the uh -huh. HR department. Uh -huh. And I walk out of the bedroom and my husband looks over yes. at me and he says, Where are you going? <laughs> yes. Where are you going? Where, where, where do you think you're going? And, and, I, and, and my dress, my attire to him said to me, he said, let me tell you what I see, Maria. I see a very provocative woman. Her dress is low cut, it's, it's tight, and the message I get is that she wants to be seen that way in the boardroom. I was like, what, what, what is he talking about, you know? <laughs> what I didn't have, though, growing up with a, in a household of women, I never had that man's perspective like that to give me the insight to the how I was how I was coming off. How, what was my brand like? What was I look, what did I look like? So I'm thinking I got it all together. I'm you know the feminine. I'm coming in with, and he checks me. Uh -huh. So I stomp back in the bedroom. I change my clothes. But later, and today, I thank him for yes, that. Yes. I thank him mm -hmm. for giving me that, that, that other viewpoint, assessing yeah. me in a way uh, to understand, well, how do I want to show up uh -huh. in that boardroom, in that meeting, to, to my new job? What do I want people to say, think about me? Because they, they are going to come to the conclusion, whether we like it or not. Uh, right. <laughs> what does my attire say? So mm -hmm. it was, it's really critical. Um, I, I think we take it too lightly. Yeah. 
<laughs> I thought that was such an amazing story. And then knowing your husband too, I said, like, oh yeah, that's Kevin. <laughs> I just stomped out of that room. I'm like, oh, he's nobody talking about. I'm gonna change my clothes in here. Yeah. yeah. So Maria, let me ask you, <laughs> has writing always been a part of your DNA? Oh my God, no. I was like, I'm like, who were, I was a wonderful D plus student. Don't take my plus away. I was a D plus student. I barely, I, I said, I barely got out of high school. And, and I felt like math and writing was not my cup of tea, but I had to get that out. Yes. Uh -huh. Because the book isn't for me. Mm -hmm. The book is for my sisterhood yes. and my brotherhood who need to understand about success. And once we get our mind off of, you know, the, the holding back and not birthing what we know we're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. the, like the nonprofit, the for-profit uh -huh, and the right. book, it's not for, it's not, it's not about me. And uh -huh. once we can shift our thoughts in that uh -huh. and move and transition to the point where we understand that it's for others, mm -hmm. that's where exactly. the gifting is. That's where the gift exactly. is. So the gift was, I had to write this. Uh, right. And editors are, editors are a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful feel. I love them because they helped me get this straight, right? Like where I was, where I fell short, an editor could pick up for me. So Marie, you talked initially about the fact that there are uh, stories in the book. Why is it important that people tell their story and not hold back, but to tell the different stories that has shaped where you are today? People see you the way you are today. Mm -hmm. they, they can walk into my corner office, it's huge, probably bigger than my first apartment. <laughs> um, and and they, they'll see me on television, mm -hmm. on it's Steve Harvey, and think you just were always there. Uh, right. But to understand how relatable we all mm -hmm. are, that I was once, I'm the same, I'm the same girl who had her car repossessed mm -hmm. because we were struggling as mm -hmm. a young family. Mm -hmm. I'm that same girl, I sit in the corner office today, but I'm that same person that you will not always be where you are. Yes. But there is, there's greatness on the inside of yes. all of us, but if we tap into it, yes. right, push it out, uh, right. ama it, amazing things will happen. Just say yes to it. <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't always a writer, I wasn't always where I am today, but it's a journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Maria, in the book, uh, you have a picture of a ladder. I do. And then on that ladder are different rungs and, and steps that you encourage people to take. Can you kind of talk a little bit about some of those steps on that ladder? Yes. Uh, I utilized uh, the ladder because I saw myself climbing the ladder. It, uh -huh. it, just, it just resonated with me, mm -hmm. and I'm finding it resonates with others as well. And in the book, you know, in the steps, I show the ladder and, and how, for example, we talked about uh, dressing for success, right. but what about serving others, yes. right? Yes. Serving yes. others is, is the very first step in mm -hmm. the book. Mm -hmm. And this is back to what I said earlier. The book is serving others. Mm -hmm. the, the way that I got from the front desk into the HR department, Human Resources, was I asked the director uh, that back then it was called mm -hmm. personnel. Mm -hmm. I asked, is there anything that I can do to help uh -huh. you? Anything I can do to support you? Because I could always see her running around, running around. I said, well, there must be something I can do to support her. And she said, no, 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 no. But ask one of my assistants. And, and I did. How can I help you? And they started giving me little projects. So what do you think happened when an opening became available? Who did they look to? <laughs> yes, so absolutely. The, the serving uh -huh. comes uh, frankly, whenever I serve as a volunteer or whatever we're doing, I actually feel so much better. <laughs> you know, I feel better. Uh -huh. uh, so that service mentality is just really the baseline of where you begin. But using the ladder of steps, uh, just, I, it just really resonated with me in, sh in a guide of a step uh -huh. by step by step operation of how you get there. So you, you mentioned the first step was service, and then um, now that you are in the corner office, but you will always pre being prepared to be that servant leader because that describes who you really are. Really does. Can you kind of talk about what uh, servant leadership fits into your overall uh, way of doing business? Yes, it's, it's <laughs> always been, uh, and you know what, I've had great mentors to mm -hmm. shape that for me. 
uh, both in corporate America and in my personal life, even if I think back of my own grandmother and great grandmother oh, and how nice. they served. My grandmother would every Saturday morning she would put boxes together yes. for the homeless, mm -hmm. and and so now that. That's in my DNA. Uh, right. <laughs> That's in my DNA. Mm -hmm. And I think if we all look back a little bit, we'll all see where, particularly in our culture, uh -huh. service. It's just our yes. culture, yeah. So it's, it's really foundational for me. Because I remember that story in the book with your grandmother, and I was like, oh my God, that's where Maria gets it from. Yes. <laughs> okay, so in your book, uh, what are three things that you would like for people to take away from the book? From the book? I think fundamentally what I said earlier about you won't always be where you are, but keep pushing, knowing that there is a still always greatness on the other side, that there is no success in the comfort zone. Yes. So yes. once you get there, right, you just say, oh, wow, I got into HR. This is great. This is where I wanted to be. I'm there. But there's more, uh -huh. right? So stay to stay uncomfortable. Get comfortable with being a little uncomfortable. Yeah, moving to the next level. Absolutely. And then the then the, the final thing is, you know, as I think about my entire family and the people that that surround me, is um, get a mentor. Yes. Get a mentor and be a mentor. Mm -hmm. It's like the baton race. Have you seen the baton yes. races, uh -huh, right? Right. Uh -huh, right. And, you, right? And you watch them and they're just running full out. And then they pass it forward mm -hmm. to the next person, right? And they pass it forward and, and they grab it. Continue to be right on that baton race running the race and passing it yes, forward. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I often tell people that um, as leaders, the greatest thing that you could ever do is to develop that next generation of leaders and being able to give back, like you said, passing that baton and, and also continuing to engage in development yourself because sometimes some leaders, they will um, become comfortable and, and they will not continue the lifelong learning and they will become, okay, <laughs> stagnant in their development. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? I agree, I am, I am, I, I am coach, I coach and I, and I am coached. Oh, yes. In fact, just this, uh -huh. uh, just this coming month, I will be in uh, a week long session for myself uh -huh. because how do I stay relevant? Yes. Staying relevant is also yes. one of the keys to success. And mm -hmm. so I, I will never forget how uh, the story about Netflix and Blockbuster and how they went in and said, you know, it's a Blockbuster, you know, I've got a great idea. <laughs> and then the little red box, right? And they said, Blockbuster said, no, I don't want anything to do with it. And where is Blockbuster yes. today? And so staying relevant is mm -hmm. so key. Mm -hmm. And I can't do that again in my little comfort uh -huh. zone, right? Exactly. It's constantly learning and I wanna help my clients successfully transition. And I can only do that to be a lifelong learner, so mm -hmm. yeah. I know when I um, went back to Georgetown and people were like, oh, you're going back to school. No, I didn't really want to, but it was one of those things like you said, um, when I had got uh, my master's, it was uh, early in my career as part of the military, but that information had now become stale. And I said, I need to go back and invest in lifelong learning so that I can be able to, yes. like you said, provide updated mm -hmm. information to mm -hmm. people and not relying on stuff that I learned 20, 35 years ago or something like that. Right. <laughs> okay, uh, Maria. Um, I want to ask you this, as a uh, Arthur now, what advice would you give uh, those who would like to write? What advice? Do it. Just do, do it. it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> that the process, it, it's a process, uh -huh. trust the process, get a good editor, Yes. and, uh, and just do it. It is, uh, if you know you have a story to tell, again, the story is not for you, uh -huh. but it's for the, it's for the reader, and it is such, it is such a, uh, I don't know, I felt like something just rose up in me and once I did it, one, one feeling very accomplished, <laughs> I have to say, I did that, I am a writer, but also knowing that it's serving others and supporting others, it's just such a blessing 
to, to do that. It also is a extreme wonderful opportunity to coach people as well. You can, now I'm breaking that down in nuggets to teach people. So we, you can read a, a, a chapter, but then what? Yes, uh-huh. So to have the support behind you um, in, in the book to provide additional support is, is phenomenal. So yeah, I just, I just say do it and get a good, a good editor. Those two are key. So if people wanted to find out more information about your books and you, what is your website again? It's, <laughs> it's I was going to say my, my email address, uh, <laughs> but my website is mysisterceo.com, mysisterceo.com. So, uh, Maria, it has truly been a pleasure having you on thank the show. You. I don't know where the time has gone, thank you. but I just want to say thank you it's for just honor. spending the time with us today. And I also want to thank you, our watching audience, for listening to uh, our show. And I hope that you have been inspired by our guest, Miss Maria Stanfield. And if you would like to know more about uh, Maria or her books, they are available on Amazon.com. And so if you'd like to know more information about this show, please uh, go to my website, executiveleadershipbids.com. Again, this is Dr. Mary Gellum. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.